in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper or the host of this program, known here on social media, wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, 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 mm. Angel Snuff number seven. I am your soul brother, number one. Well, we in the house early on a Sunday morning. Welcome to Angel Snuff number seven Sunday school. How you doing this morning? Just had some things I wanted to get off my chest. And um, before the day gets started, and I'm so happy that you would join your brother. This broadcast, of course, is being simulcast on Facebook as well as here on YouTube. So give me a second. Let me holler at my uh, Facebook. Oh, I'm having a problem. Oh, well, I'm not going to mess with it. I don't know what it is with Facebook. I keep getting those uh, technical difficulties, so I'm going to have to just, um, after this broadcast is over, I'm just going to download it to the site. I don't know what the deal is with Facebook sometimes, but that's technology. Our early morning topic for this Sunday school lesson is dark Europeans' connection to farm animal. Now you may wonder, and some of you who have followed me for years, you know who you know who a dark European is. A dark European is the descendants of slaves born in America with melanated, you know, dark skin with African or Aboriginal. Black people. <laughs> dark European is black people to make a long story short. But I'm using the title, I'm using dark European. I don't want to use black people because now here I am, I would be considered a black people, right? But there are those, and I suspect it's really a lot of black men, silly soul brothers, that don't like what I have to say as far as, especially when it comes to black men. They don't like that. So they have been flagging my videos for hate speech. And see, it's, it's just, these are the gods. These are the kings. These are the sissies. These are the pieces, pieces of trash. This is, these are the sewer rats that I keep talking about. Here you are claiming to be a god, claiming to be almighty and tough, and you cannot even handle somebody's opinion on a YouTube video. See, you know that nobody's going to find out about it, that you can flag a video for hate speech, go to your masa, and I'm pretty sure it's one of these pro-black folks. I really doubt if it's a Christian. It's one of these pro-black type cats. Who don't like what they might see as negative because they want somebody to coddle them. They want somebody when they fall down, they want somebody to kiss their wit. They, they want somebody to kiss their widow knee. I'm, I'm not gonna kiss your backside, I'm not kissing your knee, I'm not kissing you at all. Black women, soul sisters, you are doing these brothers a disservice by telling them that they are gods and kings and they ain't done a damn thing for you. Show me, show me what they're doing for you and I will talk about it. They don't do nothing. Beg for money every day on YouTube. Pretend, pretend they so smart. That's good enough for you. And you actually have babies by these bugs cause they, they, they cute and they sound smart but they live with racists. They got you living in a house with your enemy. 
Your children are on the streets subject to being murdered at any time. Just recently, a brother out of concern called the police because he seen something he felt as though it was suspicious, his neighbor's house. Cops show up and the neighbor ends up dead. Sister Tatiana or something. I forgot what her last name was. You call the police and you end up dead. She end up dead in her house. In her house. What's his name? Botham, John, John Botham. Forgot how which uh, the, the brother that was shot by the crazy racist Caucasian woman, Amber. You now, look, it's getting to the point now. You are in your house and you and you can't even feel safe. What does that remind you of? It reminds you of what our people went through during Jim Crow segregation, not only in the South, but all over the country, you was not safe. But we know for a fact that we were having a hard time in the South. You could be, if they had YouTube back in the day, in your house, making a YouTube video and somebody shoot, call you a nigga and shoot through your glass or they'll just knock the door down, beat you up, rape your wife right in front of your house, in front of your face and dare you to do something about it. Here we are now. You can't even have peace in your own home now. And these men supposed to be the protectors these men are supposed to be the providers. And you want to get angry at me because I'm telling us and I'm not going to coddle you. I'm not going to, oh, baby, you, you, you try. No. You need to be the provider, not try. You need to be the protector, not try. And if you're not going to be that, then stop trying to pretend because somebody needs to expose you for the coward and you're incompetent and you are a pathetic loser as you are. So here I am. I'm supposed to be a black man too. But you're going to flag my video for talking about my gender for hate speech. How pathetic. A bunch of losers. So instead of Black people's connection to farm animals, I have to use dark European connection to farm animals because just that title, I figured, okay, that could easily be hate speech, the title. Oh, he's calling black people farm animals. That's hate speech. See, you know you are dealing with, a, with silly folks. So from now on, I'm not going to use black. I don't like the word anyway. I'm going to use my word, dark European, from now on. I'm not going to use the word black at all, period. I'm going to use dark European like I used for years. Way back in the day, I always referred to us as dark Europeans because really that's what you are, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not, and I don't care, and nobody else cares. Because that's what the reality is. You're not an African or Aboriginal. And I'm going to continue to prove that you are living in la-la land. You're living in delusions. And you don't want to deal with the reality of our origin and who we are. But the main thing is you don't have to, it don't make no difference where you come from. It's about where you're going. You concentrating on what you are because see, what makes you so angry is because you still see a slave in the mirror. That's why you don't want to be reminded of slavery. That's why you want to talk about Kemet and ancient Ethiopia and Timbuktu, stuff you had nothing to do with because when you look in the mirror, they call you a slave and when you look in the mirror, that's all you see because you try as hard as you try. You seem you can't break out of it. 
And that's your fault. And that's your fault. Because you refuse to accept your reality of who you are. So you can pretend to be an Egyptian when you, you ain't. You can pretend to be a Moor or black Muslim or Christian. You can pretend, you can pretend to be Donald Duck. You can pretend to be whatever you want to. And guess what? Call the police and get your brains blown out. You know why? Because you're the N-word. That's what you are. And that's that's what you see when you wake up on a Sunday morning and look in the mirror. That's what you see. So you run your happy ass to church and try to and try to go off into some kind of Disneyland. Oh, Jesus and Lord. So you don't have to think about your life as being a modern day slave. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care if you are Tyler Perry. I don't care if you're Oprah Winfrey or Eddie Murphy. I don't care who you think you are. Put you in the right circumstance. The right person going to tell you who you are. You are the N-word and will always be that living with racists. That's what you're going to be. I don't care how you feel. You can feel good all that you want to. And feeling good is not forever. Feeling good is temporary. Sooner or later, when you get high, when you get drunk, sooner or later, you're going to have to get sober. And that's what y'all don't like because sober means you have to face reality. That's why people want to stay in bed, sucking somebody's phallus, licking somebody's vagina or, or booty or whatever. That's why you get drunk. That's why you want to get high. That's why you want to, that's why you watch endless YouTube videos and you, you just want to keep, Calgon, take me away. Remember that commercial? About that bath soap you put in the bathtub and you just want to get away from things for a while. You just want to lay in the bath, you just want to lay in the bathtub for a while. Hey, what's up there, G513? Thank you for being here early. Early, early, early. Remember that Gap Band song? Early, early, early in the morning. <laughs> that was one of my favorite uh, bands. The Gap Band, Charlie Wilson. Yes. So, it's a damn shame. Here I am, supposed to be a black man. And black men don't want me to talk about my own gender. So, I get flagged for hate speech. So, from now on, I'm going to keep reminding you what a dark European is. Matter of fact, I'm going to post some of my old videos. I want to show you that's the label description that I first called us way back in the day. Dark European. Or I might use soul brothers and sisters. But in this case, I'm going to say dark Europeans. It, it fits the, the topic more better than soul brothers and sisters. Because soul brother, soul brother and sister really is is our advancement is our evolution and dark european is where we where many of you are right now you have not evolved you are a slave and that's what you don't want to hear you want to pretend to be something that you're not so a dark european is nothing but a descendant of slave born in america having dark skin with african or aboriginal just black black people or whatever but i can't use that I don't have the right to say, to talk about black men. But I'm supposed to be a black man. I can't, I can't talk about black men. Because it hurts some of these guys' feelings because they're a bunch of losers. I'm not going to baby fire you. There are, are those who come to me, oh, you too negative. <clears throat> uh, you too negative. You too hard on the brother. The, that's your problem. Look, let me... <clears throat> How can I explain this real quick? <clears throat> when I was taking martial arts class, the teacher roughed us up really, really. I mean, you hurt. After martial arts class, you went home and you was hurt. You had bruises. Your lip might got your, your lip might get got busted. And you might say, What what type of martial arts class was you taking? A real martial arts class. And if you couldn't handle it, you need to quit. You don't want to get hurt. 
This is what my martial arts teacher told me. Because I'm like, I wasn't scared and I didn't mind getting all bruised up and beat up. Hey, what's up, foxy lady? <laughs> yeah, we can't even call the you can't even call the police. But uh this is what my martial arts teacher told me. Look. Let me put some of y'all comments up here. So uh my martial arts teacher told me the reason why he trained us this way because in real life listen because in real life they're not going to be playing with you. They're going to try to hurt you seriously. They're going to try to take your life. So you need to practice like it's real. Woo, man. Did you hear me? You have to practice like it's real. When you play in college or you play for the NBA, when you practice, y'all practice like it's a real game. You don't practice like it's a pretend game. When you practice for your sports, football, basketball, or whatever it is, you practice like it's real. You give your all. These guys, they don't want to get hurt. They dainty. But in a real life situation, somebody is going to be trying to kill you. Here you are, these pieces of trash, these sewer rats, they cannot even handle a YouTube video. But then they want you to think that they are warriors, they're fighters, and they kings and gods. You can't even handle a, a YouTube video. You know something, sister? From my experience on YouTube, these are some of the most weakest men I have ever dealt with in my whole entire life. They are so emotional. They start getting to cry. They almost get to cry because you because you won't accept what they're talking about. And why should I accept that crap you're talking about? Clearly, it makes you weak. I don't want to be a weak man. I want to be the strongest I can be, the most confident I can be. I don't want to be like you because if that is what is making you be what you are, I don't want nothing to do with it. Because we see, I see a weak man. You're going to go to YouTube because you know nobody can find out about it. And you're going to flag another brother's video because you don't like what they're talking about. And I'm a black man also. I cannot talk about my gender. This is the reason why I would rather hang around a lot of sisters than brothers. Hang around the brothers for what? The sisters are stronger. The sisters are more confident. I don't get, I don't have to be arguing. Well, you know, women are supposed to be more emotional. So that's what th these guys say. They said women are more emotional. So I expect that from the sisters. I'm not expecting that from men that's supposed to be so, they claim to be so strong. So we're going to talk about the dark Europeans. So brothers and sisters, I'm not using, I'm not putting that word black men, black women in my videos no more because I got, you got these losers, these pathetic losers that can't handle the truth. And when it's all said and done, you're going to have to deal with it sooner or later anyway. You can only stay high. You can only stay drunk out your mind for a certain period of time. You're gonna have to become sober sooner or later. When that cop come in your house cause your neighbor called the police and blow your brains out, you're gonna have to deal with that reality anyway. <laughs>
sooner or later. So, welcome again to my Sunday school. And we want to talk about this real quick and get out of here so that you can enjoy the rest of your day. Man, there's a lot of y'all up early in the morning. <laughs> well, I guess it's not too early. This is about the time when you do, when they do have Sunday school. What it reminds me of, <clears throat> this particular topic, what it reminds me of is people who are shame of your parents, shame of where you come from. I ain't no slave. I don't have no slave in my background. And that's fine. That's cool. That's, that's cool that you don't have slave in your background. My, our history didn't start with, with, with slavery. Okay, if you believe, if you believe that, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you believe that your history didn't start with slavery. And that's fine. And that's fine. That you, that you believe that. That See, that's the key word here. What you believe. Because you cannot show, and nobody, I don't care if it's John Henry Clark or Dr. Ben or any of these scholars, none of them shown a direct connection with you born in America, being here in America, going on 500 years, they have not shown no connection between you and Kemet or Ethiopia or no other dark-skinned people, melanated people on this planet. So you have to believe that. You have to believe you're African. You have to believe you're Aboriginal. Why do you have to believe? See, because if you know, you can easily show. If you know, you can easily show. If the glove don't fit, you must acquit. <laughs> That's an O.J. Simpson courthouse moment. <laughs> See? It reminds me of, of people who are ashamed of their parents. Your mother and your father was crackheads. And some of you who grew up during the 80s or whatever, you know that's true. You had husbands and wives that was crack fiends in the 80s. This is a fact. So these people keep talking about, well, if the husband, uh, the two-parent household, uh, the, the husband and the wife makes the family better. How does it make the family better if the husband is a crackhead and the mother is a crackhead? Now, you're going to tell me just because a two-parent household, the mother and the father are crackheads, is better than a single mother who does not do any drugs, she don't drink, she, she's catching a bus, she's working full-time, and she's going to school full-time. You're going to tell me that single mother is not a better parent than these crackheads. That's what you're telling me because... That's a two-parent household. Yeah, they, they crackheads, though. It's not about, it's better for a child to have both of their parents. No doubt about that. But it's about the competence of the parent, not the numbers. Because in this case, you can clearly see that this single mother is a much better parent than these two crackheads. But we live in La La Land. They live in some kind of Mickey Mouse Disneyland. And two crackhead parents, I guess, is better than the single mother. Now, <clears throat> so you shame. And that's what it really is about. You shame of, your, of the slave background. And what's so hypocritical now if the United States government, for some miracle, because it's got to be a miracle, for some miracle, they determine we need to offer reparations, monetary cash reparations to the descendants of slaves, 
born in America, if they decide to do that tomorrow, you shame of being a slave, but you'll be the first one in line. Where my check at? What do I get? I thought you shame of. I thought you're not a slave. Your history didn't start with that. But now all of a sudden, cause now there's a benefit to it. Now you're all in line. Right now, you feel shame because there's no real benefit, and 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 it makes you feel bad and all like that. But it makes no difference. That's just our reality. There is no connection to us and Kemet or Ethiopia or no dark, no melanated people on this planet. I'm going to show you why. Hold on a second. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. <clears throat> now, here we go. <clears throat> During slavery, and see, this is what you must take in consideration. Slavery was not 10 years, it was not 10 months, it was not 300, it was not uh, 30 months, it was over 300 years. And then they let our people loose. Your condition really still does not change that much. You're still, you're, you're physically free, but you're still not, even in 2019, you're still not free. You just have a privilege. And you don't even know what it is. Because if you knew what freedom really was, if you knew what being a liberated person really was, you would really fight for it. But you're not really fighting for it because you don't know what it is. It sounds good. I want to be free. Child. One day we're going to be really, really free. What does that mean? What, what is it? We as a people have never, you have never lived without the races. Not one day. You've never been independent from the races. Not one day. Never. You don't know nothing about it. You can talk about Kemet. And you can talk about ancient Ethiopia, Timbuktu. You can talk about whatever for generations, for over 300 years. You don't know nothing about, the only thing you know about is living and depending on these races for your survival. If you take these races out of your life right now, you're going to be in bad, bad shape. This is a fact. Do you make gas come to your house? No. Do you make electricity come to your house? No. Do you, the, the, the corn and the steak and the potatoes in your refrigerator, did you produce that? No. Your mouthwash, your toilet paper, if we took everything out your house that you did not produce out of your house, what you gonna have left? You didn't even build the house. You have nothing. What kind of people are we? We don't produce absolutely nothing. But you want me, you want, you want me to come on YouTube and talk to you like you got it going on. I can't do it. The reality is you depend on another people for your very survival, for your very life. And if they say, we're done with you, it's over. Many of you are ashamed to form 
when you go to college, you ain't thinking about farming. You want to be some kind of businessman. Y'all want to rap. Yeah, you want to do everything except something that you could use to help you survive. You have to eat. Number one priority, food, clothing, and shelter. All that other stuff don't mean nothing. You have to, you have to secure food, clothing, and shelter. All the education that you get in your head don't mean nothing if you cannot eat. If you have no shelter. If you have no clothes to wear. Now, we can run around here and we can go back to the natural way of life, I guess. We don't have to wear any clothes. So, But you still need food and you need some kind of shelter. I got to keep it real here, y'all. I got to keep it real. Have to give it to you. No chaser. Otherwise, I'm doing myself. I'm doing us a disservice. It's simple as that. And here you are, all our leadership, all these popular people on YouTube, are they talking about food, clothing, and shelter? No. They telling you about all this other dumb stuff that don't mean nothing because if you can't eat, you're done. All your food is coming from somebody else. Their chemicals, their GMOs, whatever they've done to the food, it don't make no difference. That's what they want to do. You eat out of somebody else's kitchen. Instead of a black African school, you need we need to be helping our, our farmers. It's brothers and sisters who are farmers in the South right now that cannot even produce what they could produce because they don't have any help to harvest the crops. They don't have any help to do anything. Is the Nation of Islam, is the Moors, is Young Pharaoh, is Seti, is any of these popular YouTubers talking about, let's go help our farmers, let's put some real food on our table? No. The Mississippi campaign, what I'm talking about here, and our sister, our sister says that we need solutions. That's what the Mississippi campaign is about. It's about taking the control of a whole state so that you can secure food, clothing, and shelter, number one priority. All this other stuff don't mean nothing when you're starving. You want clean, good food for your people. That's number one. Decent housing. I'm not talking about building no mansions and all this old crazy stuff, swimming pools and all this other stupid stuff. No homelessness. We should not be homeless. Food, clothing, and shelter. That's what you need. You need that to start off with. All this other stuff, African schools and these businesses and all this other stuff, Dumb stuff these folks talk about, that don't mean nothing. Then they turn right around and talk about, we need organic restaurants. Why don't you produce your food so your chefs can cook, can, can cook organic food? You're not producing, the, where you gonna get this organic food from? Other people. And, and chances are, it's not real, it's not real organic food. They still done something to it. You need food, clothing, and shelter. But you going to tell me, I was, I, my history didn't start with slavery. You still acting like a slave. Because the slave, the slave depended 1,000% on his masa for food, clothing, and shelter and everything the slave ever needed. Just like you do. Take everything out of your house that you did not produce and tell me what you got left. Not even the clothes on your back. You don't even have the clothes on your back. 
your clothes made in China, made in Malaysia, made in Taiwan. You be butt naked, have nothing. And you're listening to these people that's guiding you to just feel good rhetoric. Guiding you to a mass grave. Guiding you to your destruction because you have nothing. And if other people decide they don't want to give you nothing, then what's going to happen to you? Like Eric Muhammad said, talk black to me. Living in these fantasy worlds. So for many of you, we will agree. Can we agree? Even though your history, quote unquote, it did not start with slavery. So can we agree that our people did go through slavery here in the United States of America? Okay, we agree on that, right? Okay, hold that point. Now you agree that our people, our ancestors suffered over 300 years of physical slavery. Okay, we're on point. Okay, we agree right now, right? Now, watch how you start changing your mind. During slavery, what's up there, T-Bone? Remember, the slave or the Negro we, our people, were treated like animals. We were property. You still with me? Okay, we were property. Just like a hog, just like a chicken, just like a dog, just like a cow, we were property. And they, treat, they treated us like animals. When they bought and sold you, you saw some of the movies, the races will come, lift up your lip, look at your teeth, made you strip down naked, look at your, your, your genitals, your backside, treat it like animals. Hey, what's up there, Osiris? Okay, now look. Our people ate animal food. Do you know why our people ate cornbread? Because they were not allowed to eat wheat. They did not, they did not have uh, access to wheat. The animals ate cornmeal. Our people took that cornmeal and made bread out of it. That's the reason why. Also, there's a lot of plants that y'all call weeds right now. That's what our people ate every day. And I don't know. And see this. See, this is the mind-boggling thing. There's a plant called pokeweed, and I remember this this weed growing up. My people ate it. Don't you know this pokeweed is extremely poisonous? Don't eat the berries for real. My people use the berries uh, to dye clothes with or whatever. Now you tell me, now see, listen to me. If we were Africans, how would the African know that that poke weed was, wasn't, was good to eat, but it was poisonous and how to cook it so it wouldn't kill you? Like Eric Muhammad said, talk black to me. How would African know that? How do how would an African from the continent come over here to America and know what plants what plants have medicinal purposes? Which ones, even though they was poisonous, what parts of the plant that they could eat? Only a people that was already here for maybe thousand years would have this kind of knowledge. An African from that continent, okay? If you don't believe me. Let's do an experiment. Take your happy ass to Africa and you have no knowledge 
of the plants and the animals over there. Throw your happy ass in the jungle and let's see how long you survive without any help. Because you have no idea of what those plants are. You have no idea how to hunt those animals or nothing. It's all foreign to you. The only reason why the races made it here in America, remember, was because of the native people. The native, the native people helped Christopher Columbus and the explorers that came here. They were starving to death. They wasn't going to make it without the help of the native people here. How would an African know how to prepare poke weed? When the African never saw, have no knowledge of a poke weed. Remember this. Woo, man. Oh, man. Praise Jesus. Woo, how glory. Hallelujah. How the glory. <laughs> Woo. Our people had to be natives. The original slaves had to be natives here. Even the slave master. When the slave master got sick, remember, he would call, they would call for the witch lady, the witch doctor, you know, the, the, the doctor of the slaves. She had the knowledge of medicine outside of, the, of, of, you know, European medicine. And a lot of these slave owners had more confidence that that woman or that man who had this knowledge would heal them and make them better than European medicine. Where did, where did they get this knowledge from? It could not have come from no Africa. Yes, they imported certain plants and things from Africa, like peanuts. Another name for peanuts is guru. They said the, the, the peanut plant came from Africa. But that's bringing a plant over here. These Africans have no idea of what to do with the native fauna here. They have no idea. The only people that could have had knowledge of how to trap the, the, the animals and what plants could be used for food and medicine had to be the original people that was already, already here. It's impossible for them to be African. It's impossible. Explain this to me. Maybe I'm, I'm missing something here. Here you are. You live in America. Don't you? God bless America. You live in America, right? Here you are. You live here. Been here all your life. We can take you and throw you in one of those fours in, 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 in West Virginia, and you would and you have no idea what plants that you can eat, how to find water, or none of that. But you're gonna tell me that some Africans 3,000 some miles away or whatever, you can bring them over here and they know everything. They have this kind of knowledge. It don't make any sense, y'all. It just don't. So we was treated like animals. You still with me? Okay. Whatever the animals ate, we ate. Unless we were smart, unless our people was already here and passed on the knowledge of plants and animals to our future generations. Now, of course, as you know, the slave master did not allow native tongue. He did not allow you to read and write. But the slave master did not stop our people from passing down information about finding food, finding water, and uh, these uh, plants that you could eat and make medicine out of. They did not stop that. That was not against the law. It was against the law to speak your native tongue outside of English that, that you was taught. And of course it was it was against the law to read and write. Now they stopped that. 
But this other information, the slave master had no problem teaching other slaves about medicine and food and all. They did not stop that. So, since, now this is the key here. So since we were treated like animals, So, since they treated us like animals, let me let me talk about uh, let me talk to Syrian real quick. Syrian says Europeans say the natives were red Indians, and why would they lie? Go do a Google search. Go do your research. Get the information prior to them saying that the natives were red. The first explorers that was here, they painted the natives as some dark, they was not red. Those paintings were some dark, dark skinned people. They were not red. They did not call them red. They called them Negro and they called them African. Go do your research. On down the line, maybe so. And they did call them red Indians. But in the beginning, when they first got here, and that's what we're talking about, the original people that they saw was dark skinned. According to the painting that the first explorers, what they uh, painted, and they also called these people Negro, and they called them Africans also. Do your research. Get the information. Check on it. Like Beyonce said, check on it. So they treated us like animals. So what do you do with animals? In order to get an animal to serve you, you must domesticate that animal. It's called domestication. You must break that animal. You must take it from out of a wild state and domesticated. Another word for domestication is servant. To serve. That's why they call a woman's work in the home domesticated work because she's there to serve her family, to serve her husband. Domesticated work. To serve. And this is another point that you have to understand about domestication. When you be domesticate an animal, it begins to change form. They change the, the form from what it originally was. Do a Google search. Do a Google search. Now, look, do a Google search. Go look up the original cow. Go look up the original pig. Look up the original chicken. These animals that you see are domesticated. They don't look, many of them don't even, don't look like the original animal. Go look it up. Even your plants. Go look up what ori the original corn looked like. Original beans, original bananas and watermelon. Go do a Google search and see what those plants was when they were in the wild, in their original state. All this stuff that we have is domesticated. Your watermelon is domesticated. Your bananas, your peaches are hybrids and mutants. Your plums, your cows, your chickens, your beef, your lamb, these are domesticated. They're domesticated. They were bred, taken out of a wild state, and they were bred to serve man. In fact, some of these animals, without people, they would die. They cannot eat. They, it's gotten to the point they cannot even take care of themselves. They cannot even take care of themselves. Like the silkworm. The silkworm has been bred to the, to the point 
It cannot even get out of the cocoon. Somebody has to get that. In order for it to become a moth, it has to, somebody has to take that silk, take the silk, unwind the silk so that so that an uh, animal can get out of the cocoon. It's messed up. Mm. So you it, it changed. These animals changed because of domesticated. They were bred for certain purposes. Some chickens are good for eggs. Some chickens are good for meat. Some cows are good for meat. Some cows are good for, for milk. Some cows are good for plowing. Some horses are good for racing. Some horses are good for plowing. Some dogs are good for hunting. Some, some dogs are good for chasing rats. Domesticated animals are bred for a certain purpose by their master, whoever bred them. So the same thing happened to you. The same thing happened to us. Some of us was bred for the house, to be the house slave. Some of us was bred just to be out in the field. We were servants. We were bred to be servants. There is nothing free. There is nothing free about it. Now, look, if, if you look at domesticated animals, a lot of times, you can open the fence and they won't even leave they because they're they don't they they are scared they're used to being in that corral in that fence they won't even leave you have to scare them out of the corral they they won't even leave because they're not used to being free they want to stay where they are comfortable at this is the reason why you see our behavior Even though we talk a good game, this is all that we know. We've never been free. Never. We've never been free. At no time. And so we talk about it. And if you look at some of these animals, you're always going to have exceptions to the rule. And sometimes the exceptions to the rule can inspire the other one. Like, if you open up the gate, nobody, none of the animals will move, but one will move and two might move, and the other one will say, hey, let's follow them. Not because they want to, not because they want to, but because you had these, you had these animals who become dominant and, it's, and they just follow behind them. But here we are. You want to tell me that slavery, you act like slavery has not affected you, that you better, or oh, my history didn't start with slavery. Well, how come you don't you don't act free? You don't act free at all. You're not making no real attempt. It's it's uh it's all a show. That is that's what it is for you. And so with domestication comes change. You cannot ignore that our people was raped by the European. You cannot, you cannot ignore that all these dark-skinned people was different. You, you cannot ignore that when biracial people was produced, you mix with them. There is nothing pure about you. So over hundreds of years, this produced a brand new people, a brand new hybrid, just like these animals. The same thing, the same process. The perfect slave. And that's what we have today, the perfect slave. You got to serve, to show you how much of a slave you are, you got to serve something. 
if you tell these brothers and sisters, uh, you don't believe in God, I'm not going to serve nobody, they look at you like you crazy out your mind because we have a slave, we've been bred to be a servant. You might not want to serve the white man no more, but you got to find somebody to bow down to, to serve. So your connection to farm animals is the same process that farm animals went through. We went through the same thing. You're domesticated. You are not like the original. You're not, nothing close to the original. We was bred to be slaves. That's all that we know. But the thing about it is you don't have to stay that way. You can be better. You don't have to be ashamed your parents was crackheads. Just because your mother and your father was a crackhead don't mean you have to be. It don't make no difference that our people were bred to be slaves. You claim to be in a different position and you claim to know better, but you do better, but you can't do better. John Henry says, we can still see that today among our people, enslavement as much as mental as it is physical. And I totally disagree with your knowledge here, soul brother number one. It's all right to, to disagree. And I really don't understand what you, really what you're trying to say. And I don't know what you're disagreeing with me about. I just told you. It's a mental because that's all you've known. You're a slave. Our people were slaves for 300 years. You've never lived independently. Never. Never. If you want to claim Egypt and you want to claim Ethiopia or Timbuktu or whatever, that has nothing to do with you. You never live without white folks. Never. You've never been independent. So I don't know what you're disagreeing about. I don't know. You wasn't here earlier when I was talking about you don't produce nothing for yourself. Take everything out of your house that you did not produce and let's see what you have left. You have nothing. Even your clothes you didn't make. You produce absolutely nothing. What it is, you want to feel, you want to feel good about yourself. Okay, Mr. John Henry, jot down in the comments, what do you produce for yourself in your house? Go ahead. The people in the chat room, y'all keep an eye on John Henry. He's getting ready to put down the things that in his house that he produced. So we're going to wait on that. Now, while we wait on him to write down nothing, because he's not going to be able to write down nothing, you don't bring water into your house, electricity, gas. You don't grow none of your food. We're going to wait for John Henry, because basically I'm done with this subject. I made my point. I made my point that <clears throat> that's our connection to the farm animal. We was bred that way. Domesticated. We was changed. Now this is the best that John Henry can do. Look. The land produced was is needed. Our people live in the great I ain't talking about what our people do. I, I'm asking you, sir, what do you produce in your house right now what do you produce in your house? You don't produce your own food, no clothing, no shelter. You don't bring water into your house, no electricity, an ink pen, nothing. Maybe some dust. Maybe that's the best thing that you can get in your house. So we're going to continue. We're going to wait on John Henry some more. 
Because this does not answer. No, look, this is the best John Henry can do. The white man had no, that, the white man had not the health to survive, no one. What? See, this is what I'm talking about, brothers and sisters. We don't want to accept the reality of things. We want to live in some type of la la land, and you want me to come on here and tell you how great you are and how beautiful things are. Everything is beautiful in its own way. That's what you, you want me to sing songs like that? I'm not going to do that. For the third time, we're going to ask this brother, what in his house does he produce? That's the question. We're waiting. The audience is waiting. But I disagree with your analogy. You disagree because you cannot handle the reality of your situation. Your black supremacy, your black moor, your black Muslim, all your blackity black stuff, just some feel good mess. See, look, see. At one time, our people produced everything. I'm not talking about at one time what our people done. I'm asking you, sir, what in your house do you produce for yourself? See, that's what I'm, I'm saying. And YouTube is filled with this kind of mindset. You just want to live in fantasy and keep talking about, you want to keep talking about what they did 5,000 years ago and, and what they did in the 1960s. This is 2019. This is what we want to talk about. What's going on right now? And what are you going to do to change this condition? You say that you're not a slave. You say that you're free. When why why don't you act like a free person? You still act like that slave. In fact, you really act worse because our people, when they were given the opportunity to to have physical freedom, they got on the money. Here we, woo! I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna be out of here. Look, here we are in 2019, and we cannot even produce. What our people was able to produce straight out of physical slavery. They could not read. They could not write. They didn't have. They didn't. They didn't. They did not even have lint in their pocket. It's like Eric Muhammad said, "Talk back to me." Why is that? Because y'all. Because all these people on YouTube have filled y'all mind. All these people that y'all like fill your minds with all this uh, fantasy stuff, and you're comfortable. With the electricity and the food that your master give you. You're comfortable with that. If your people are not talking about food, clothing, and shelter as number one priority, they are leading you in the wrong direction right off the bat. You cannot fight a revolution hungry. You cannot be liberated hungry. You got to put clothes on your back. You got to have shelter. This is the number one priority. All this other dumb stuff that these folks are talking about don't mean nothing. This is why they stay away from Angel Snub Nub 7 because I'm not going to let you feel good about doing nothing. Either you do it or shut the hell up. And you're not doing anything. And you don't want to do nothing because you're a slave. Nothing has changed between 1555 and 1619. You was depending on your slave master. You was depending on your slave master to take care of you. Our people was depending on them way back then and you're still doing it right now. You cannot even accomplish what slaves done straight out of straight after the civil war so we watching the comments brother john henry and i asked him three or four times what does he have in his house 
What does he have in his house that he produces for himself? And he has yet, but he said he disagreed with what I'm talking about, but we still waiting for him to, to tell us what does he, does he produce? Absolutely nothing. We already know. So Syrian says the white man set us up by destroying our families and using drugs. Let me tell you. Let me say this. <clears throat> hey, what's up there, twin? <clears throat> the white man set us up, set us back by destroying our families and using drugs. <clears throat> First of all, the white man, to my knowledge, have not forced none of y'all to do no damn drugs. Raise your hand. Six, tell me in the, in the chat room, put it in the comment section of this video, what white man forced y'all to do crack? To drink bud beer? Ain't no white man talk force y'all to do none of that. How did the white man destroy your family? How did he do that? You're not supposed to be a slave no more. How is he destroying your family? Ain't no white man destroying my family. My family is a bunch of idiots. They don't want to be together. There's no white people around. They're just a bunch of Negroes, silly Negroes, selfish and arrogant, Ain't no white man got nothing to do with it. He ain't destroying no damn family. You got men who don't want to take care of their children. White man don't have nothing to do with that. You make it, it's more excuse making, more feel good rhetoric. You want to blame everybody except yourself. All the white man. The white man only done so much. After a certain point, it gets redundant. It gets silly. It sounds stupid. You're the problem. We are the problem. Get sick of hearing, oh, the white man do this, and the white man, you're supposed to be free. Ain't nobody white in your life. Many of you, there's nobody white in my life, except on the job. There's no white man destroying my family. My people are just some idiots. Selfish, arrogant, things of that nature. They don't want to be family. Have nothing to do with no white man. And none of these white men, ain't nobody white that I know of, no Caucasian, came to my family members and forced drugs on them. You do it yourself. So Syrian continues to say, the government used the mob to push drugs. Who? Why are you doing drugs? Why are you doing drugs? Right now, you can put a stack of crack cocaine on my left side. You can put beer and wine and alcohol. You can put all that in, in this room with me. I don't want it. How are you going to push something on somebody? The only way you can push something on somebody, because they want it. Why do you want it? Feminism was put on us by Europeans. Feminism, yeah. Any, just blame anything except yourself. The reason why the sisters was attracted to feminism is because the brothers was kicking their ass, beating them up, abandoning their children. That's the reason why. That's the reason why the the sisters are attracted to feminism. You want to blame everybody except yourself. If the brothers treated the sisters as their equals in this struggle, we would never have had no problem. But no, you, you want to play that I'm the provider, I'm the protector. You want to play that leadership role and poke her out. 
and you want her to be an inferior, you want to copy your slave master because that's the way he treat his white woman. So when you get free, that's your example of a man. So you want to do the same thing to your woman. And I'm so happy the sister's not going for it. Sit your happy punk ass down. If I was a woman, I'll be on the feminism thing too. I'm not going to be punked down. I'm not going to be viewed as an inferior by some punk man talking about submit to me. Submit to you for what? Do you provide? No. Do you protect? No. You don't do a damn thing. You just want to be like your slave master. Blame everybody except yourself. You don't do nothing wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with you. We still waiting on John Henry. We still waiting on John Henry to, to put down what does he produce in his house. That's what we, we still waiting on John Henry. He, he said everything else except Make a list of everything that he makes, that he produces for himself in his house. Everything. And he had, John Henry has not given us not one item, nothing, an ink pen, a letter opener, a fly trap or something, nothing. And your leadership is keeping you a slave. You're comfortable in your in your in this in this oppression. This is why you don't understand me because I want out. That's all I want to talk about. I don't care about the baseball game. I don't care about what's happening on the news. What what they talking about on CNN and, and ABC and and uh, 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 Tyler Perry. I'm glad for Tyler Perry. I'm not interested in that. Just more stuff to keep you comfortable in your incarceration. I'm not interested in that. So since you're too lazy and too cowardly to change your condition, let's just let's just have a dream. I have a dream that one day little black boys will be kissing on little black girls and everything. Oh, oh you don't like that one. You don't like that speech by Dr. King. This is what you want to hear. Oh, I have a dream one day that we're gonna go back to Kemet and we're gonna go back to Africa and we're gonna we're gonna live we're gonna live like it's heaven and and the sun gonna burn up all the black uh, all the white people. I have a dream, my friend. Live in fantasy. Live in fiction. Mm. I can't do it, y'all. My eyes have become open 1,000%. I see things exactly as they are. <laughs> well, I guess uh, John Henry, he's not going to never tell us. But he, he disagreed with what I'm saying. But uh, he's not going to, uh, well, you know. See, comfortable slaves, pro-black, comedic, black supremacy slaves, more science temple slaves, John Henry, John Henry, whether you like it or not, brother, you're a comfortable slave. We're comfortable slaves in this mess. That's just the reality of it. Whether you like it, whether I like it or not, that's just how it is. Until you decide you want to change. And you don't want to change. Because all that stuff in your house that you didn't produce, you in love with it. You don't care whether you produce it or not. You go out and you you got your nice little job and you and you can buy these things. The sad thing about it, if you are ever in a position to, to, to become uncomfortable, it's going to be too late. Right now is the time.
to change your condition. My friend uh, Syrian says, you forget, we have deadly enemies who keep us down. More excuse making. More excuse making. That's all you want to come here to do and make excuses. So what you have deadly enemies. Snakes have deadly enemies. Rats have deadly enemies. There is a lot of folks have deadly enemies that don't stop you from surviving, that don't stop you from progressing because you have a you have an obstacle. You learn how to jump across the obstacle. You learn how to avoid that obstacle. Stop making excuses. God ain't going to do a damn thing for you. Allah, Yahweh, Yeshara, Whatever these gods is, not going to do a damn thing for you. If you and I don't decide to change this condition, it's not going to be done. That's just the bottom line. John Henry says, we fight the goddamn white beast. You ain't fighting nobody. You're just talking. So I'm going to ask John Henry a, a, a question that he does not like to answer. We fight the GD white beast, goddamn white beast. How? Put it in, in the comment section, how do you fight the white beast? Because if you was fighting the white beast, you would have things in your house that you produce, sir. Well, well, talk black to me. John Henry continues to say, we never submitted to the white man, and I know it. Only our enemy do not know this. Sir, in order to become a slave, you had to submit to the white man. Duh, duh. <laughs> in, order, in order to be a slave, you had to submit to the white man. What you talking about? In order to have Jim Crow, in order to have the black codes, you had to submit to the white man. Duh. <laughs> See, we live in fantasy world. <laughs> we live in a fantasy world. All our leaders with momentum end up dead. What does this mean, Syrian? This means that we're not protecting our leadership. See, they really didn't secure Dr. King. And Malcolm X had no, no real security. So that's our fault. So now when we raise when we raise up and support our next leadership that's doing the right thing, that's want to do good, we need to secure that person and protect them. But also at the same time, you cannot depend on that person because that person can die. That person can change his mind and sell you out. So you have to be a leader unto yourself. So if your leader is assassinated, if your whatever happens to your leader becomes corrupt, you know what to do on your own. It's just like if we go into Chicago and we depend on the on the bus driver to take us to Chicago, but everybody on that bus should know how to get to Chicago with or without that bus driver. You live in the United States of America. How many presidents have been assassinated? Lincoln, I think Garfield, Kennedy. This country did not skip a beat. It kept moving on, kept moving on. That's the way we have to be. You cannot depend on one person, one king, one ruler, one queen. The people themselves have to understand what leadership is Understand what you're about and move forward with or without this person that's, lead, that's supposed to be leading the charge. Let's stop making excuses. Let's stop living in fantasy. 
And the thing about it also is, our sister said it earlier in the chat room, we need solution. The solution is here. We call it the Mississippi campaign. The Mississippi campaign has all the elements that we need in order to be successful. All the elements that our ancestors actually gave us. One organization cannot solve this problem. One individual, one Messiah cannot do nothing for us. We must do this as a people. And it don't take, it don't take all of us, just that strong leadership, that strong uh, uh, number to begin the process to let the people see, let the people see, damn, they know what they're doing. Let's go. We've never had that before. We had confusion. People over here, people over there. The Mississippi campaign has been created in a way, has nothing to do to do with religion, has nothing to do with a particular ideology. where it's more acceptable by the masses, wherever they are in life. This is not about your morality. This is not about your morality. This is not about your personal wants and needs. This is about what is, what is in the best interest of a people. To make them become a people for the first time. We're not a people. We are all in our little separate tribes. But I can work with John Henry. I can work with Jimmy Billy. I can work with Syrian. I can work with Twin. I can work with Miss Fox on the things that we have in common so that we can move forward. Because all this other stuff don't mean nothing if you don't get your liberation. Now, once you get your liberation as brothers and sisters, because I respect you and you respect me, we can hash out and work all these other things out later on down the line. It means nothing if you're still a slave because a, a, a slave can't tell another slave nothing. So there's nothing that you can tell me. You ain't nothing but a damn slave just like me. So why don't we agree on this? Let's get out of slavery. The Mississippi campaign has all the elements that we need and you can make it just that much better with your brain power, with what you bring to the table, but it's the foundation where you can be successful. I can guarantee you, it'll work. And when you win, you win really, really big. Not only whether they like it or not, you will gain the respect of the United States of America, but you're gonna gain the respect of Africa and the whole world. Because they know where you come from. And when they see what you accomplish, they the only thing they can do is just shake their head. How is that possible? Because God was on your side. Is it a God in the sky? Is it a God under the ground? No, it's the God right here. Right here in your brain. It reminds me of that story of the Wizard of Oz. And Dorothy went looking for the wizard. So she can go home. She had the power to go home all the time. And the wizard turned out to be a fake. The wizard turned out to be a fake. She had the power to go home all the time. She didn't need no wizard. I'm telling you the same thing. You don't need Africa. You don't need the white man. You don't need God. You don't need nothing except yourself. You got the power. The only thing you have to do like Dorothy is click your heels together and get the job done. It's right here. Even your Bible says that heaven is you. Heaven is you. You're the one. You don't have to die. It's you. Thank you, twin. Where's Syrian at? I want to talk.
Simeon said, a leader needs a vision for what the future will look like. Absolutely. That's what the Mississippi campaign is about. It's about the now and a future when all of us would be dead and gone. To set up a, pro a, a, a process because you don't want to be like those who are in the world right now. In order for us to survive, in order for us to have a real future, you don't want to be like Africa. You don't want to be like Europe. You don't want to be like Australia. You don't want to be like these current people because the direction and the mindset that they have, you see what, what that brings. You don't want to be like them. So you have to have vision. And a leader has to be creative. And that's what we have in the Mississippi campaign. Creativity and we have a vision. And that's what you don't understand because I see the future and because you can't see it, what, what you talking about? You can't comprehend. But see, when you have leadership potential, when you think like a leader, that leader has that vision. The only thing you can do is have trust that that leader is guiding you right. And I'm saying that this Mississippi campaign is the right thing to do. It has all the elements. And when you do this and we make it successful, you will, oh man, you'll be shaking your head like, oh, we could have done this a long time ago. Right, absolutely. But you cannot do it. Keep living in this fantasy thing that we that we live in. That's the problem. Like, like Jimmy Billy in the chat room. Sounds like Alquan. Jimmy Billy sounds like Alquan. <laughs> but uh, chances are it is Alquan. But uh, that's it. Now, see, see, Jimmy Billy is not thinking. Jimmy Billy says running is not a proper solution. How are you running when you are in the United States of America? Mississippi is in the United States of America. You are setting up your own safe haven, a place where you can feel safe, where you can do things that benefit you for a change. You are creating your own homeland in your oppressor's space. And when you get ready, you can decide whether or not you want to stay here or you can get the hell out of Dodge. And you have proven to other people around the world that you can take care of yourself, that you can be successful. You know what the hell that you're doing. So now instead of people around the world looking at you like a detriment, they see, wow, those people are very, very beneficial. They smart. They hardworking. They competent. They can get the job done. Look how successful they was among the enemy. They can come to our country and help us. Mm. Wow, man, man, man. So, man. But we cannot, we cannot, um, our minds are stuck in, in this fantasy and we're comfortable with the things that we get out of this mess that we live in. Twin says, this is not a fantasy temple. The Mississippi campaign makes 100% sense. And that's right. And that's right. And I don't mind debating people over this, but the only people that I can, that want to debate me is emotional Negroes. They want to cry and want to start calling you names. They cannot stick to the subject matter. And I cannot do that. If you know somebody that could actually come here and bring whatever solution, whatever that you want to bring, bring it to me and let's have a debate about it. I already know I'm going to win. I already know. I already know I'm going to win. Because all this other stuff that y'all talking about Already been there, done that, don't work.
So, with that said, I'm already 5,000. And uh, there are those of you, I'm going to tell you, quite honestly, I'm a realist. And I also, I understand that all stories don't have a happy ending. You keep going in the manner that you're doing. See, I don't know why people ask questions. Why do you ask questions? Because you're really not interested. The thing about it is you're just asking questions. You're just asking questions just to harass. You're not asking questions really to know. You're jealous and you're angry that somebody brings a real solution and you want your God or you want the Muslims or you want Kemet, you want some, some, of that, some of that stuff that you love, you wanted to get the credit for something that's good. I'm not giving none of that crap the credit. And that's what you don't like. That's what you don't like. Syria says, what ideology are you going to use to govern your new state? Treat a person like you want to be treated. How about that? If I have a drink, if I have a cup of water, I want you to have a cup of water. How about that? Ain't that a nice place to start? Twin says, obviously, some people are scared of being self-sufficient. Now, true. They are, because it's a lot of work. And all your degrees and all your knowledge don't mean nothing. You don't need a college degree. It's nice. You don't need college degrees and all this stuff in order to produce food, clothing, and shelter. They was doing that way before modern times. Farming, making clothes, building houses. You didn't need no college degree to build a house and feed yourself and all these type of different things. So, like I say, I understand that some of you just want to die. I understand that you're gonna you're going to sink and you want to go to hell and go down with your master. You're a slave. You're a black supremacy slave, a comedic slave, a Hebrew Israelite slave. You're a bunch of slaves. And you would not, and you cannot comprehend when a free person, when a free person comes and speaks, you don't know what to do. You have no idea. What you, what you talking about? Why, why it is you can't comprehend nothing? Because you want to serve something. You want something to take care of you. Some people scared of being self-sufficient. Absolutely right, twin. It's a scary thing. I'm going to say this. I'm going to get out of here. When I was locked up, I'm not going to lie to you. I was scared to get free. I'm going to say that again. I was locked up for 10 years. I was scared to be free. So I, I understand y'all mentality. I understand that. But I had faith in myself. I did not ask myself where I'm going to go, where, what I'm going to do, but all these old dumbass questions that y'all come up with. Get free. Because all that don't mean nothing until I get free. When I get free, I deal with that when I get on the other side. You asking all these questions don't mean a damn thing. Get free first. Get liberated from oppressor first. Depend on yourself first. Deal with that stuff later. Get free. Otherwise, the rest of the stuff don't mean nothing. Become liberated. I understand. I, I really understand that you're scared. It's a scary thing to depend on yourself. Because see, 
Y'all talk all that. I'm a God. And you talk God is on your side and, and you're a goddess and you're a queen and a king. Well, when you get put in a position, you got to prove it. It's a whole different ball game. Talk. Talk is cheap. Put you in a position where you have no choice. You have to, you have to depend on yourself. We'll see if you're a god, you're a king, and you all this kind of crap. What's up there, Brother Gary? Brother Talib, you in the house too. I saw you also. But uh, I just wanted to come out. I, I, you know, I'm going to tell you. I came out here. I thought I was going to do a 15-minute, 20-minute video. And now it's an hour or so. <laughs> but it's all good because I really enjoy spending my time with us. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody in the chat room. Um, thank you, uh, those who are listening. Uh, unfortunately, my uh, Facebook didn't go too well, but we'll get, we'll be, we'll, we'll uh, I'll just uh, download this on my Facebook later on when I get a chance. And uh, your brother Gary is in the house. What's up, everybody? So, Brother Gary's in the house. Where's my brother Talib at? Where he's at? Let me go back. Miss Brother Talib somewhere. I know he's in there somewhere. Brother Talib, where you go? <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, peace and respect you too, Brother, brother Talib. And that's another thing. I want you to uh, support our sister, Noble. Noble Levine, she created a new website, um, ancientcreationmyths.com. Support our brother, Talib, Eric Bell. Um, support our brother, Cool Cool Cutter, brother Gary. All the links is in the description box for those of you who uh, want to donate, you can do that now. You can use Zelly. Link is in the description box. And uh, I'm looking forward to having a nice get together with you. In December, we're going to be, of course, promoting the Mississippi campaign some more. And uh, I call it Soul Liberation Day 2019. Uh, this is the fourth, is this the fourth, the third or the fourth Soul Liberation Day? Soul Liberation Day is not only about promoting the Mississippi campaign, but it's about just liberation, our own individual ability to liberate. And see, this is what you have to understand. All of us have gone through bad times, but We've gone and found the inner strength in ourselves to liberate ourselves from a problem. So now we know that we can liberate ourselves as individuals from certain problems. Now what we want to do as a people, come together as a people and liberate ourselves. And we want to get this beast off our back once and for all. That's what we want to do. So on that note, let me get out of here. Got a long day, and uh, I really appreciate it. It's an honor. And uh, hey, what's up there, Joe? I just saw you, Joel. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for for joining me. And uh, even the people who disagree, it's hey, it's all good. It's all good. Um, like I say. The Mississippi campaign is the way to go. Bring what you bring what you can to the to the campaign and let's work out the kinks. Let's find the things. I mean, let's just work on it. But the Mississippi campaign is a good foundation. 
and bring no Jimmy Billing. Let me talk to Jimmy Billing. So this man has all the answers. No, Jimmy Billy, I don't have all the answers. No. See, take the Mississippi campaign. Jimmy, bring your element. Bring it. Bring what you have to bring to the body so that it can it can become a full-fledged human being. You know, we got the core. You bring the arm, somebody else bring the leg, and we can pull this off. When you pull this off, whoo, man, you just don't know. You're going to scratch your head. We could have done this a long time ago. Let's stop being jealous of each other, envious. Let us try to understand where another person is coming from. Even though you can't see what another person is, how they see things, try to do it. And there are things in the past that we can use. But you got to use it differently now because the enemy knows how to counter it. Syria says, first you need an ideology for us to buy it to. The Mississippi campaign is an ideology. Look up the word ideology, Syria. The concept of the Mississippi campaign is an ideology. It is political. Look up the word, what, look at what political and ideology means. That's what it is. You want your God. You want your religion. You want something that you like. You want it to get credit. That's your problem. That's your problem. And it's something new. So you don't understand. You want it to be associated with something that you can understand. You can't even understand. You cannot even understand. You cannot even understand to treat a person like you want to be treated. You say, what, what does that mean? <laughs> wow. If you can't understand to treat a person like you want to be treated, you are really, really lost. That's political. So, mm. but uh, Mr. Jimmy Billy, I suggest that you, if you want to know more, because I don't have time to go back and forth with you because you just want to, uh, I shouldn't even address you at all. I'm going to leave it a go. Just say whatever you want. To. I'm done with uh, folks just asking questions. Just, just for the hell. They're not trying to learn nothing. They just want to ask questions just to harass you. They're not trying to understand, don't want to understand, because they're a bunch of pathetic losers. You continue to do, just continue to do you. Just keep doing that stuff that you're doing. And clearly you shame of what you're doing. That's why you come here hiding behind a damn picture. You're not even, you're not even, uh, have confidence in, in what you're talking about. Bring your video. Explain your, your position to us. Just want to harass somebody. Ask questions just, just to be silly. Because you're comfortable with the thing that your oppressor gave you. Your TV, your little funky job, your car. So you don't have nothing else to do because Masa provided. Let me mess with this Negro. So on that note, let me get out of here. Let me get out of here and uh, I'll talk to you on the flip. And again, thank y'all for joining me. I didn't really expect uh, all this action early in the morning, but it's good to see that uh, brothers and sisters are, co uh, are coming here and willing to, to give us a listen and try to understand because uh, those who are really trying to understand and comprehend, they are quiet. Those who keep just asking, you, you're not trying to listen. You're not trying to understand nothing. Just come here to harass. Just keep doing you. 
I already see what that what it has done for you. Nothing. So keep being the pathetic loser that you are. That's what you are, a loser. And you want me to be a loser. I don't want to be a loser. I'm a winner. I play to win. I know how I know how it feels to be um, incarcerated. I know that you're scared. So um, I'm out of here. Y'all have a nice day. And again, it's an honor. I appreciate it. Thank you for, for joining me. And as Don Cornelius always teach us and told us, as important, I wish us love, peace, and soul. I'm out, y'all. Thanks.